Well, when you have uh, retired uh, General Martin Luther Aguay, who is the former Chief of Army Staff, you'd expect that we'll talk about security, even though he's also uh, the chairman of Shaw P. Thank you for coming out this morning, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good morning. Well, let's start off with security. I mean, it was only recently where uh, at that conference where you spoke about uh, national security policy, which was needed to address the structural ambiguities, as you put it, which is currently working against uh, our collective security machinery. What did you mean by the structural ambiguities? Tell us about that. Well, uh, thank you very much. What I mean by what I mean by structural ambiguities, um, if you look at our security uh, and uh, setup now, you have so many people in that, so many organizations and so many agencies. And how do they relate? What is the chain of what we call in the military the chain of command? And what is the relationship vertically and horizontally between them? And it is a known fact that one of the challenges that led to the success of those who planned 9-11 was the rivalry between the organizations. And, and when I was discussing that topic of national security policy, I did mention one of the personal experience I had when former President Charles Taylor was trying to escape from Nigeria. Every of the security operators or agency wanted to take credit. But what interested me most that time was what the then president, President Obasanjo, stated said the most important thing is that a Nigerian apprehended him. Who is that Nigerian is immaterial. Because sometimes we spend so much effort, so much fighting each other to show that we are better and they are the worst, or that we, have, we are responsible for the success, or that the boss at the top must know before any other person. And instead of passing the information to those who need to know, who need to act on that information, especially in this uh, dynamic world, uh, global village that we are living in today, information is important. And getting the information at the right time to the right person who needs it is important. You, if you have the information and the person who needs the information cannot have it when he needs it most, and you give him a belated information, it is useless and it will not lead to success. So those are some of the ambiguities I was talking about. So that every organization knows the chain of command, the line of communication, and the relationship between each one of them. Has it always been like this uh, ever since uh, the advent of our democracy, these ambiguities? Well, uh, this ambiguity has been there. And uh, now with democracy, you, ask, you will agree that there is openness for people to speak their mind. But the challenge is that a lot of us who know don't talk. And those who talk don't know. So that is a major challenge why you be able to remove the popular Nigeria then say, who is the then say? Be very specific. I heard this from so 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 source. Is it true? But when we allow rumors to rule us, then it becomes a serious thing. And especially when it has to do with information, and it has to do with uh, information that is needed for decision making, then we have a big challenge there. Mm. One is looking at what has been said, because this is a problem that we've brought to the uh, we've also noticed that uh, among security agencies, that issue of rivalry. And every time you bring it up, security agencies tell you, well, they're working on it. You get to see it maybe during elections where, you know, they say that they have a joint committee. For instance, now the 2015 general elections will be coming up and you will hear that they have a joint uh, task force or some sort, you know, comprising every single unit. And then you ask, 
what is the place of rivalry? And they say, oh, that is non-existent. Well, that used to be, but is no longer existent. Um, but in spite of that, you still get to hear behind the scenes, of course, definitely not on television, never on television, you know, some musings as to existence of that particular rivalry. Is it something that will ever go away? No, I, I, I do not. Rivalry, like conflict, mm -hmm. is good sometimes. There is positive side of it. Uh, what I mean, if there is a conflict, sometimes you sit down as a leader and you don't understand what is happening around you until when there is a conflict, then you have a wake-up call. So that rivalry would sometimes ginger people to do we want to outshine the other organization. But it should be done within the acceptable perimeters. If you have the guideline set up, who is in charge of this? What is the relationship between him and the other person? Supposing four of us that are seated here have belonged to four different organizations. When something is wrong, and we have seen something wrong on this table, do we have to make sure all our bosses know of us? Or do we sit among four of us and say, there is something wrong on this table. How do we correct it? And then tell our bosses, we have sat down together, we have looked at it, and we have corrected it, and this is it. Then the boss will say, well done, or next time when it happens, do it this way. It is better to take, to make a wrong decision than to make no decision at all. Are you implying that this is one of the reasons why the security apparatus in the country doesn't seem to be effective against the insurgency so far? I, I, I do not have all the facts, but I believe that if we have a guiding role, deciding and determining a policy that set up what everybody needs to do, then we have a doctrine to make people train, um, learn, operate in, within those bounds of the policy, then it will reduce considerably some of the, I would call them uh, gray areas that we may have that some may want to use it for their own organizational or individual benefit. That's all I'm talking about. Right now in Nigeria, do we have a security policy? Yes. Is there any in existence? Uh, there, there, definitely there, there is a security policy. But you don't think it, but, it's but effective? I, this is what I'm saying. And I will, I'm, I will be, uh, let me also add to, uh, let me look at it completely from the negative aspect. I was made to understand that currently there is a policy, a draft decision going on. And uh, soon, and I hope, and I, I said in that my lecture, that if it is on, then we have to fast track it because time is not on our side. But there is something going on, and I'm happy that most of our security agencies have understood that there is something wrong and they are working on it. But the last thing I want to say or, or want to comment is that security is everybody's business. And as the world is today, we have gone into where human security is paramount, not state security. Because it takes the human being in that state to survive before you have a state. If we all die, who will live in that state? So human security is paramount. And because it is paramount, and we are in a democratic setup, the People themselves must have a say in that security policy because you understand what you mean. Security is for you to feel secured that you can leave this studio and go home and sleep and come back tomorrow without feeling being threatened. That you can have a shelter over your head. That you can go to a medical doctor when you are sick. That your children can go to school. These are part of security. And that, that is what human security is paramount. So because the human being is at the center today, then the human being himself should have a say 
in that security policy that you are going to have. So will this policy be backed by the Constitution? That if, if it is not backed, then it is not a policy. And that is why I know, at least uh, I was part of the group that came up with the last or the first Nigerian defense policy. And it's backed. Yeah. By the, it's an act. It's backed constitutionally. So the same thing, the policy we are talking about, should be a national policy backed constitutionally that makes it easier to operate and that makes it easier to challenge or to discipline those who are contrary to the policy.